Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we are going to complete this equation. So typically, we are looking to solve an equation. In this problem, we are looking to complete this equation. So we have something, we don't know what this is, of course, being multiplied by 2n. We just know that the product of this is equal to 1. So the question is, what is this? Okay, what is this equal to? So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, of course, solve this. Now, the big point of this problem is obviously to solve this, uh, to solve the problem, obviously. But uh, there's kind of a, I got a bigger um, kind of objective in this video. And I want to stress a very important mathematical principle that you need to know, certainly if you're taking courses, well, any course, actually, math, and definitely things like algebra. Okay, so if you know that principle that I'm kind to, or I'm, I'm trying to refer to, just by looking at that, uh, looking at this problem, go ahead and put that into the comment section as well. Of course, we're going to get to all of this in just one second. Also, if you need uh, math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video is exciting and helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what times 2n is equal to 1? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. The answer is 1 over 2n. All right, now, uh, hopefully most of you out there got uh, this correct, even if you don't know uh, what the kind of property we're gonna be talking about here in a second. But uh, if you got that right, that's outstanding. As a matter of fact, let's give you a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you were able to solve a nice, interesting math problem about equations. But really what you did here was show me that you have some knowledge of this topic here, and let's kind of take a look at it. What we're really talking about is a multiplicative inverse. So some of you are like, oh yes, I kind of think about, think I uh, remember, you know, learning that. You might be saying, yeah, in the beginning of my math class, my algebra class, we learned a bunch of things about, you know, uh, identities and the commutative property, distributive property, associative property, all that kind of good stuff. Well, listen, that's very, very important. Um, foundational knowledge in mathematics. As a matter of fact, it's hugely important. And we use these properties. Uh, we, we don't really kind of know the name. Um, you know, oftentimes we don't understand the names that we're using uh, when we do mathematics. But there is always a property or some sort of underlying mathematical principle that allows you to do the steps that you take to solve a math problem. So this particular problem is really kind of stressing um, the idea of the multiplicative inverse. So if you've got the name of, or if you got, if you forgot about this, you're like, yeah, I forgot that, but I don't remember it. Well, let me go ahead and just kind of refresh your mind. Now, there's of course um, uh, different inverses and identities and whatnot. We're just going to keep it nice and simple and talk about the multiplicative inverse. So that's what we're really talking about here. Okay. So this is again a problem that can be solved if you understand what the multiplicative inverse is. So let's take a look at what this means. Okay, so let's take a number, all right, a non-zero number. So we're not talking about zero, any other number other than zero. So if we have some number A and we multiply it by one over A, so in other words, we're gonna flip this upside down, which we call that the reciprocal. Well, this reciprocal, okay, this one over A, would be the multiplicative inverse of this number here. Now, how do we know that? Well, we can um, verify that because the product of these two numbers, a and one over a is equal to one. So anytime you have two things being multiplied together and you have uh, the product of those two things is equal to one, well, you're dealing with a number and it's multiplicative inverse, i.e. it's reciprocal, okay? So hopefully, you know, this is something you're like, yeah, I think, uh, you know, that's, you know, what you had to do to figure out this problem. But again, you want to kind of um, be familiar and try to remember the names of these properties. Okay, so we're talking about the multiplicative inverse. All right, let's take a look at some basic examples. Uh, let's suppose uh, here is uh, the number three. And I said, 
give me the multiplicative inverse uh, for three and verify that you have the correct answer. Well, the multiplicative inverse for three would be the reciprocal of three. Now here, you can see that the answer is one third, but let's take a look at three. If you're saying, well, I don't see three as a fraction, we'll just always put that over one. All right, so three over one is the same thing as three. And when you flip this upside down, it's going to be one over three. Okay, this is the reciprocal of three or three over one. This is our number. This is our multiplicative inverse. And we know that because when we multiply these together, the product is equal to one. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, little example. If I told you here is our number one half, give me the multiplicative inverse. All we need to do is to flip one half upside down. So that would be two over one or two. So two is a multiplicative inverse of uh, one half. And you can verify that because one half times two, of course, is one. Okay, so now let's go back to our lovely problem here. So you can see we're talking about the product of two things here is equal to one. So 2n right here must be the multiplicative inverse of this mystery number, okay? It's the reciprocal, okay? 2n represents the reciprocal of what this value was, this number. Now, this is not going to be an actual number because we're dealing with uh, a variable, but all we need to do is to flip this thing upside down and we'll be able to get uh, uh, determine what that value is of that number. Of course, we could do this very easily because here is 2n or 2n over one. So when you flip this upside down, uh, the reciprocal is going to be one over 2n. And of course we could verify that, right? Because one over 2n times 2n or 2n over one is equal to one. These two n's cross cancel, you got one over one, which is one. Okay, so, you know, these properties, you know, the associative property, the commutative property, identities, inverse, this is stuff that you definitely need to understand in mathematics, okay? Now, uh, you know, a lot of students forget uh, the names of the properties. They might be kind of familiar with it, but I can tell you right now, as you progress in mathematics, especially more advanced mathematics, all these properties are going to come back time and time again, okay? Um, and it's pretty interesting. One of the things that I've found, you know, studying, you know, advanced math and, you know, you think like I used to think like, oh, calculus, you know, like things like this is super hard. When I was uh, in my math degree program, you take, you know, you study things like this calculus, you know, uh, first semester calculus, second semester calculus, you know, as a freshman, typically at the university level. And I didn't think those courses were overly uh, difficult. And I was like, ah, that's not too tough. But as you progress into your more advanced level and master uh, degree level mathematics, this stuff looks like arithmetic compared to the, <laughs> the level of math that you have. So it's, you know, it's all relative in terms of, you know, learning mathematics. But the reason why I bring that up is because in the most advanced math that I've taken, things like abstract algebra, uh, non-Euclidean geometry, it's, it always has a connection back to the basic, basic principles of like things we learn in arithmetic. Okay, so math is a continuum and everything you learn in math is important. But if you need help with like basic algebra and things like this, definitely check out like my pre-algebra or algebra one courses. Those would be good courses to kind of establish those uh, strong foundations that you need to know. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.